Hello and welcome to Panty with the Geeks. You join us for an unboxing of the First Strike, a uh, starter set. So this is the cheapest of the starter sets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got some cool models in it though. Yeah. Uh, they're easy to build as well. So if you're, if you're new to 40k, uh, this is probably your entry part to the game. Yeah. This. It's 25 English pounds. I don't know how that translates into other currencies. But basically you're getting 40 quids mm -hmm. worth of miniatures in it. That's mm -hmm. English pounds, quids. Sorry. Pound sterling. Uh, pound sterling. Because <laughs> uh, uh, there's four of the starter box sets in this, um, which are tenner each, which is also, you know, ten pounds sterling. Um, and this is basically 25, so it's cheaper to buy this uh, as a starting set. Plus the box itself turns into a bit of scenery. Yay. Yeah, and you get a, I think you get a mini ruler in this as well, I can't quite remember. We're going to open up and find yeah. out. Uh, in addition, once we've had a look at this, we're also going to take a quick look at Open War. These cards here, which was another 10 English pound. And then uh, also we're going to have a look at the getting started. Do we want to have a look at the getting started before the first strike or should we open first strike? First strike? First strike, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a look at that afterwards. Yeah. Because you get a model with that as well. I'm going to be claiming that model to test that course key. Well, we've, we've got the uh, the one for the Age of Sigmar, and I claimed the... Yes. It's in, yeah. Sigmar. It's only fair. So it's only fair you get the primary. Yeah. Okay, so first strike. Uh, there's the back of it. That's basically what you get in the box as well. Mm -hmm. It has the this little green square that's appeared on some of the kits, which is easy to build. So I presume these are going to be like clip together as opposed to need to be glued. All right, okay. We'll find out when we get into mm -hmm. it. I haven't really looked a lot at uh, mm -hmm. only what was in White Dwarf basically. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea to be quite honest because if you're thinking about getting into it, you're more likely to spend yeah. £25 than you are £95. Yeah, you are. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an easier entry. Yeah, uh, the next it's not the Dark of... Imperium isn't worth the money it actually No, is. definitely not. But... And then you've got No No Fear which is the one in between that's 50. 50. And that's sort of like a stage in between. It's nearly everything you get in Dark Appear. I'm missing the characters and I think something else. Yeah. Um, and obviously you don't get the, the book as well. Rule book. In that. So, obviously you don't get a rule book in this as such. I think you'll get a mini guide. You get a little mini guide, I think. There we go. Oh, no. So, the bit you don't want to tear is this bit. <laughs> because this is your scenery. Um, hmm. You have some bases in there, they've all got, they're almost like the blood bowl bases, aren't they? Or is it just indentations? Sorry, I thought it was a hole all the way through, I'm wrong. Hmm. It's just the way they've been formed. Yeah, it's just fooling me. <laughs> so, you have a mini ruler, six inch ruler. Oh, right, it's quite okay. useful. Oh, well, that's uh, handy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, at the top there, we have the Ultramarines transfer set, which is useful if you're collecting Ultramarines. We have some dice, some standard white and black D6s with the starting out. We have two coals of plastic, so you don't even need to paint them if you really don't want to, to start with, to tell the difference. We have green. I've never seen that colour plastic before. It's sort of a, it is a nurgly green. It's snot. Snot. Snot green. It's not even snot. Snot's lighter. It's sort of a, depending on what colour your snot is. I mean, if you're ill, it's a darker snot green. Well, there used to be a paint called snot green. So I was <laughs> yeah, I remember. This is this, this is probably real snot green. Uh, so those are the walkers, and that is the three death guard models. So you get six of those, which we're going to take off the sprues. It looks like literally they they're not much different to the other pox walkers. They were pretty easy to put together. Mm. But these are just like two piece ones. The death guard are there. Cool. There's the three of them. Are those the new ones? The new. Yeah, yeah, the new death guard. They're different from the ones in the dark the ones in the box. Yeah. yeah. We have, uh, those are the intercessors. So that's about the only thing that's like a, a double. Uh, well, they're the, I thought, actually they're different ones, aren't they? Cause, I think they're a bit different Yeah, because you didn't stuff. get any guys who had a lot no. of So even these are different from the, the uh, they're intercessors. Yeah. But the different models. Cool. And then we have the, the one that's caused the most ruckus, which is probably the Reavers. And there they are. I don't know whether they, they, you consider them primary scouts or not, but they're, they're really the ones that go on cause leadership problems in, in the enemy. They just like, look uh, awesome. So they're more like uh, assassins or hunters or something. I'm not surprised with the masks that they've got yeah. on. They've got like a, a, a skull mask, haven't they? So those are the models. In addition, uh, we have a two foot by two foot playing mat, if you will. It's double sided. Oh. One side's got deployment information and one side's blank, so you can just use it. And then we have a first strike book. Read this first. 
So we have the instructions for building there, which we'll have a look at, and also that is your terrain, which is basically like three of the uh, actually one here, big two of me. It's three of those put together, put together if you will. Um, so literally that, that, and then the other one, which is that. But it's useful because if you're starting out and you've got nothing, it's better than using a book for a hill. Let's have a look at the map. Because that's why I did the very first game. I had books for hills and Aww. stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so that's better than using a book because it looks better. Um, I don't know, you can use your imagination then, can't you? Yeah, but I'd rather. <laughs> my imagination got a little bit of a beast by them actually looking like <laughs> crates as opposed to having black library. It wasn't, we wouldn't be black library at the time. Oh, so this is paper. This is like a paper kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, there you go. Again, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of one of the uh, cameras that close to it. It's, it's two by two foot uh, piece of the sector imperialis. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's the other, the other side. side without any uh, deployment stuff on. Well, that's handy if you want to. Um... Again, if you're starting out, it's really good. Mm. Another thing as well is. If you're going on holiday, I suppose, kind yeah, of thing, a travel kit. A travel kit. Yeah. You don't have to take all your models with you. You can just take your favourite models and play with this. That's not a bad idea, actually. A mini <coughs> travel version of one forty thousand. It is, isn't it? I mean, in the old days, we just used to use Epic as a mini travel version of one forty thousand. Or Space Marine, as it was at the time. So, in this side of the back tradition. Uh, <laughs> We have introduction, Wild Fox Knows in the Universe, the Galaxy, a bit about the Adeptus Statis. I'm surprised that they've actually given you any real information into the side. Mm. And there's uh, the non fear board, so that's where you really go up, set up paint system. So, yeah, those are the other two things we've released today the uh, Ultramarine paint set and the Death Guard paint set. I had to paint a little painting guys. That's oh, nice. That's nice. And a little painting guys for Pox Walkers. There's only one. Uh, and a bit of open play. Let's play match play. So narrative play, sorry. Um, then starting playing. So this is about what you've you've got here. So we've got the dice, the range ruler, got these cards which I'll show you in a second. Uh, armor containers on the board. Mission 1 Containment. Uh, what could move. And then like an example of movement and everything and shooting. Mission 2, Blood and Blade. We could play through this if anybody wants us to. Yeah, it's like a little tutorial. Yeah. We're more than happy to go through if, the If anyone tutorials. wants to play through this, uh, let us know in the comments. Yeah. We will do. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can paint them all up. Showdown and then advanced rules. Next steps. I like that. that that's pretty much the same in the um, mm. Battle Force box sets when you get like a little insert and it says your next steps are, and then the bigger box sets that it moves on to. So this is literally the 140,000 core rules. Whoa. It, the header is on the front. I should have looked at that. I didn't see that. But it's like the. Uh, the polite one that you get in Dark oh. Imperium. It's exactly yeah. the same. Like the one we have here. Which is quite handy to have more than one copy printed off. Because then, so it's basically the version mm. of this. Which I thought you would have just got this or not, but no, this is specific oh, like to old. First Strike. Yeah. It's exactly the same. It's just in a book format. Mm. Well, that'd be good. Yep. So we've got two versions of the rules. And if you get stuck, you can just download them. Cool. We also have these cards. So these are the unit cards from this box set. So we have the Pox Walkers there. Power 2. So these are obviously specific to this box set because there's only six of them. Uh -huh. um, what I'd like to see though is these for everything. Oh yeah, definitely. Them. Well, if they can do them in this, it bodes well that they can do them for everything yeah. else. I don't see why they can't. I like them this way around, unlike the Age of Sigma ones, which are that way. The lengthways, yeah. Yeah, this makes much more sense. Yeah. Um, Plague Marines, Intercessors, and Reavers. There you go. 
And then we have the assembly instructions. So this should be straightforward, I hope. If we even need them. So let's start in order from the book for a change, rather than just doing it the wrong way around as we normally do. Uh, so we'll start with the intercessors. So let me move the camera in. Okay, so the intercessor sergeant is first. Mm -hmm. uh, he's parts one and two there. He's also part three. Um, that makes the body and the head up. And it does look like they just slot in. Also, they've got little um, tabs. So yeah, it doesn't actually they... look like you need to glue this at all. Yeah, they have little um, spokes on the arms. That's good, because literally you don't have to buy any paint. You don't have to buy any glue. You just pick this box up. <laughs> yeah. Literally, if you just want to see how the game plays, you pick this box up. You have to worry about really sticking them together, because they just clip together. And then off you go. It's like one of the old uh, board games they used to do. Alright. Yeah, the games where actually did board games and stuff. Did they? <laughs> they did board games? I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> Ancient. I think they're going back to the roots anyway with all the stuff they've uh, been releasing the last couple of years. Mm. Right, so there is the pegs. As you can see on the arms, they're quite large. I so those are the pegs on the inside there, which are going to tally up to those there. And literally, you just push them in. Uh, yeah, you'll need the head first though. And the head, yeah, goes in there. So, and that's got one of those plugs. So the head has to go in first, then that plugs on, and then the arms go on. I am going to glue this just for security. <coughs> I don't think you'd even need to though, to be honest. But because it's Claire's, I'm going to glue it. Oh. Otherwise, she'll just stare at me. <laughs> so, let me stick those bits together, and then we'll put the arms on. Okay. So, that's where we're up to. So yeah, I did put a bit of glue on, it does stick together, head's a bit fiddly, it does drop out easily, but you know, if you're not gluing it then there's quite a chance to put it in the right place. It will come apart again after you put it together, you just have to prise it apart. So there we go. So next up is parts, um, which one's that? That's four for the gun, six for the backpack, and the other arm is five. So the backpack is going to stick in that hole in the back. The arms are going to go on those prongs. We'll back when he's done. So there we go, finished. I haven't glued him into the base, he's just slotted in. That's a pretty good fit. I'm just not going to fall out. I mean, we will be cutting the tab off the bottom of those and sticking them onto a scenic base. Oh, yeah. Definitely. To go with the other space marines that we've already got. But there you go. If you don't want to do that, you just even play it, stick it, and he's ready to go. He's, he can play the game now. Mm hmm. Just with that one model. Yeah, just with one model on his own. So he's obviously <laughs> going to win. Yeah. Now he shoots himself on a roll of one, followed by another one. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. So next up is one of the intercessors. Part eight and seven goes together the same way. You've got nine on the back. And then we have 12 for the backpack. And then we have 10 for the gun. And then the other arm, which is 11, there's a peg on that, which fits underneath the... Uh, on the other hand of the gun, because he's holding the gun with both hands. Mm -hmm. So that's the only difference on that model. So we're just going to clip him together. Get him off, clip him together. Same with the other guy by the looks of it. He goes to go a bit more like the sergeant, because he's got two separate arms. But again, same process. Head goes in there, balance that in while you push the back in. That's the fun part. And then... <laughs> or if you've got glue, you could literally just stick the back on, clip that uh, peg off and glue the head in. If you wanted to. If you've already got the glue, you could do it that way, mm -hmm. no problems. It would be easier to do that actually. Um, there we go. So we'll stick the other two incestors together and then we'll have a look at the Reavers. Okay, so there's one of the incestors. And there's the other one. That makes up the first squad of three guys. And there they are. Oh. So I'll have a look at them again at the end with everything else. We should now move on to the Reavers, which are next, is that right? Yep. Okay, so part eight, seven, and nine. And the arms are eleven and ten, the backpack is twelve. Let's get those bits off. Okay, so there's the body again. These go together pretty much exactly like the intercessors do. So you have the head, which is gonna go in there. So the way I've been doing it, I've been putting glue on that, lining them up. It should line up. Like that, yeah. So getting that, so it's like that. 
sticking the head in that and then closing it. I'm not going to do it because I want to put some glue on that. But yeah, if you if you put those bits first, shove that in, close it, that's how you get the head to line up easiest. And then all we're going to do is put the backpack on and put the arms on. And these are the, uh, is it heavy bolt pistol these guys have got or something? Uh, yes, heavy yeah. bolt pistol. So the other thing I'm going to do actually is, you don't need to do this, but I always do it, is try and throw them across the room. You <laughs> wouldn't recommend it, you might lose it. No, seriously what I was going to say was, uh, is going to drill the uh, the barrels out. It's just using the standard, you know, workshop drill and bit. I'm going to do the same on the intercessors and any of the other guns that are, are on these kits. I'm going to do the same. So, let's have a look at the other two. Um, again, they're put together exactly the same way. Two and one. Uh, three, five, four and six. They all go together. Uh, don't mix the sprues up, obviously, because these numbers are the same. Each mm. sprue is individual. Because uh, they're all different box sets. Yeah. Just put in one. So don't, don't mix the actual sprues up. Because there is a two and a one on the others as well. And I imagine there'll be one on the Death Garden, etc. But, um... And then we've got 14, 13, 15, and then the two arms and the backpack again separate. So I'm going to go ahead and put together the entire squad, come back, show you them all. Okay, so here are the Reavers. That with the Sergeant. These look awesome. <laughs> so the shoulder pads are smaller. Mm. It is like the equivalent of having a Scout. The leg design is definitely based on Scouts. Yeah, they're like combat-y kind of thing, yeah. aren't they? Like combat They're a lot thinner design. I mean, a lot of people mm. don't like that about them. I just think it's different. I, I, I don't mind it. I, I don't have a problem with it. Me neither. I think that they're, they're different enough. They look like lighter troops. Yeah, they, they like do. They're going to be a bit more stealthy. Well, that's they, what you'd expect of I think they do. Though. I think, I mean, design whether you like it or not, I think it reflects what they're trying to reflect from mm. them. Um, whether they've done it to everyone's satisfaction or not, it's up to the individuals to decide whether they like it or not. I don't mind it, I quite like it. Mm. I, really, I really like the skull plate faces. Oh, that looks awesome, yeah. I mean, the Night Lord's called and wanted them back, but uh, there we go. <laughs> they're not having them. Right, <laughs> so we'll look again at them at the end with all the other models. Mm -hmm. And we'll now move on to the Death Guard, which is actually already opened. The Death Guard sprue is next. That's the sprue again, just for everybody's perusal. With the three guys on. So let's get the parts off for all the models. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have uh, the main part of the body, which is part two. We have the stomach with a big green face on, the jump mm -hmm. We have part four, which is the arm. We have the backpack with the plasma gun in it. It's a plasma gun, not a pistol. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have a power fist. It is a power fist. So this guy's armed to the teeth, really. Um, so they just go together again. It's the same sort of thing. We're going to put that on. Backpack goes on the back. Arms go on the pegs. These pegs are slightly squared off, not just round like the uh, Space Marines. There we go. So we'll stick him together and we'll be back to look him finished. So there he is. He looks cool. He is. He's very cool. For a clipped together model, that is exceptional. Mm -hmm. The other Space Marines are quite sort of straightforward, kind of expected from the Primaris. But this guy, there's a lot of detail in there for a clipped together model. Yeah. Very good. Um, so the next game in this guard is this one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, is 11 and 10, 12, 13, 14. It's just four pieces. So let's have a look at him. Okay, so there's the main part of the body, which is part 10. Again, I need to put the head in place on this one. So that's part 11. It's got one of those cool uh, spiked helmets. Cool! Traditional Death Guard World War <laughs> 1 guard. Awesome. Then we have part 12, which is the front. And then we have... Um, where's the numbers? 13. 13, which is the bolter. It's huge. I need to drill that. End and then hollow it out a bit because it's massive. Now, once you've got the head on and they got that in place, the bolt is going to go into that arm, into that arm, and then there's also a hole in the middle of the chest 
the third pack to go in, so it's well secure. And then we have the backpack to go on, which goes on there. Done. So we'll stick him together, and then we'll, we'll also get the parts off, seven and six, eight and nine of the four parts or so, for the last of the Plague Marines. Okay, so there is the standard Death Guard. I hope so. Awesome. There's such a thing. Looking very awesome. I do really like these models. They do encompass a lot of the old design. With, yeah. With new and make oh, it just works. <laughs> I can't say I, I I like them. I know some people might not, but I really like the Death Guard. Mm -hmm. Right, so the next guy. He is um part six. And then the front of him is part seven. You have a backpack again, which is part nine, and with the blight launcher, which that's it if you've not seen one. It's the first time I've seen one, and I'm shaking it, I don't know why. It's excitement. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's a blight launcher. It looks a lot. Is it the Grave Wardens? Grave Wardens, that's from it. From Forge World, that's a Death Guard. It looks a lot like their mm. weapons. It's probably where the designs come from. So we'll stick him together and have a look at him. Uh, which will only take a few seconds, really. It's dead easy to put together these things. And then we'll get on to the pop walkers. So there we go. Cool. Very <laughs> awesome. Like that one. Mm -hmm. Again, like I like them all. So, uh, Death Guard Pox Walkers. Three parts. Part 10. Part 9. Goes on the front. And then we have the arm, which is part 11. Which is going to go on that peg there. So that's him. So look at the others, actually. I've got the other one, actually. Just I think they're all like two bits. I've missed one, you're right. So he's just two bits. Top half, bottom half. Then we have head, separate head, four and five. That's easy to put together. Seven and six, like that one. And then we have three and eight, which aren't even, they're just single models. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's just stick them all together. Okay. So there we go, there's the models. My favourite sim. <laughs> Probably followed by the other two Death Guards. <laughs> what do you think? I really like them. I'm, I'm loving the Death Guard. They are really unusual and different. But I'm also loving the uh, Reavers because of the masks. They just look like yeah. our boys. As a start, I wish these sort of starter sets had been around when I started playing this. It would have been great. But yeah, as, as someone, if you want to get into the hobby, this is a great place to start. Oh, definitely. Um, just for the models, they're awesome. They are. Start. They are, re and they're really good, easy to put together mm. as well. Um, yeah, those are really easy to put together. Those are, literally were just clipped together, done. The yeah. only reason I glued them was just to secure them in place. Mm. You could probably get away without doing that, um, but. I've got the glue. So you wouldn't need to buy the glue, you can just buy this box. Like the only thing you would need is a pair of clippers. Yeah. Or too. a knife and get someone else to help you with that if you get a knife if, if you're a young one. Yeah. Um but yeah, there you go. That's the uh the models. Mm -hmm. Um so if you want, as I said, right at the beginning, if you want to see us play the scenario, so I think there's about three, wasn't there? Yeah, um, something like that. From yeah. this, let us know in the comments, we'll play through just with these models. Otherwise, next time you see these guys is when they're all painted. The rest of my Death Guard stuff's painted, so I'm going to go ahead and paint these dudes next. Uh, again, you wouldn't mm. necessarily need to paint them straight away, because that's why they're in two different colours. You could play this straight out of the box. Like I was saying, mm. you could take it on holiday or buy one on holiday if you were, like, you know, not abroad, but, like, if you were in a hotel in England yeah. or something and you went into the city, like, York or somewhere like that, and you, you picked up a little box that you could play it in your hotel room at night. Yeah, you know. It's, it's you could, yeah, it's literally, it takes. It's like a travel kit. It's taking us half an hour to take the models together. Yeah. And that's using glue. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Right, so let's have a look at the Collect, Build and Paint and Playbook. We've mm -hmm. got it. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that and we'll stick that model together because that's mine. Y yeah. <laughs> it's my only Primaris Marine I'm going to have so far, so uh, <laughs> I want to try out a colour scheme on it. Mm -hmm. So let's get that. Okay, so this is the also the magazine that came out today. Uh, this is the Collect, Build, Paint and Play. It's a bit like the one that I from Age of Sigma. Mm -hmm. um, I got it because there's a free Primaris on there and I wanted to try out a colour scheme. I could have probably bought a box set of three of those intercessors. But then I thought, I can going buy that and then I'll buy another first strike. Yeah. So after that I thought, no, I won't buy this. Otherwise I'm buying a dark computer before I forgot the shop. <laughs> um, there we go. 
So I thought you might guys might, might want to have a look at it. See if you're interested. So it's stuck to the front. Mm, there we go. Come on. There you go. Oh, didn't tear either. Yeah. Uh, so that is the free Primaris Marine. Um, let's put them together first, shall we? Actually. Okay. Just leave um, that there. Leave we? that there. Let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> so he's blue, he matches the ones in first strike. Maybe so you can use them straight away. And there he is. I think he goes together exactly the same way actually. It looks like he does. He does have a scenic base on. <coughs> cool. Which is unique. Hmm. It looks like the ones that they, they give out in um, Games Workshop. Oh, yeah, you know too. when you call in and you, they show you how to paint one. Yeah, the new ones that they've got. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, do you want to clip that off? I will do. So while you're clipping that off, we'll have a look. So getting started. Stop! Assemble your Space Marine. <laughs> Alright, calm All right, down. Calm down, keep your head Build your Space Marine, follow these steps. Two and one. Right, and the back. So it goes together exactly like the ones from First Strike. Right. You need a space marine to help you through the book, the rest of the book, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I think that's what it is. You need him with you to, to guide you through the first morning, 41st morning. So we have, which is similar to the one that you get in the actual book, Salamanders, Raven Guard. World Eaters, anyone? Not yet. Aww. The Unions of Chaos. Okay. And the Imperium. So there's a knight spinning on the corner. So just going through the different races. Necrons. Looking to see those turning the Tyranids. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ruby to give them. Where to start, collecting and to play, collecting to display. There you go. Collection Ultramarines. Okay. Oh. Oh. There's the new Death Guard tank. Oh, it's pretty funky actually. I like that, actually. Um, yeah. Kind of looks like a slug or a trilobite in the shape of it. Slug. <laughs> it's just perfect. Nurgle would approve. Um, Maybe just put a bit more rust on it, maybe, or something. But yeah, that looks really good. So is that what you're going to be getting? Well, when it comes out. So service and Nurgle, we've got the demons and stuff. As well here. Sweet. Old Dairy Warhost. Old Al. Old Dairy. Old Al. Old Dairy. Playing games. Battle for the bunker. So we have a, uh, just a bit of evidence for a scenario, isn't it? I want, want a bigger game. No, no fear. Advertised again, though. <laughs> and we've got the uh, start sets. Well, the easy to build sets. So they're exactly the same ones are in first strike. Same with the uh, Primaris. All the other uh, starter armies, which are there. All the box sets to start yep. collecting. Nice centerfold there with some Death Guard up. Right. Eternity of War, Wars on Ultramar. So just get on that. Lots of background information. Mm -hmm. Wars on Armageddon. Still miniature showcases. So old marines. <laughs> <laughs> Mini marines. Crimson Slaughter. Uh -huh. Painting miniature. Yeah, we've got painting techniques. I think that's similar to the first strike actually. Oh, but just how to paint your marine, won't it? Mm. Your free marine, which will stick together.
ground brushing. There's quite a bit on painting in here actually, there glazing, is. basing. Yeah. That's good. That's a really good thing for a start, a technical paint. And then play greens. This is the same bit that's in first strike. I think you were on to that one. I was. Play greens. And some more pictures. So I think. Orcs, Bad Moons versus Ultramarines though. Yay. Dead Sheets, I had to read them. Might have seen a White Dwarf. Obviously you've not had White Dwarf because you need to this. Uh, the Core Rules. Mm -hmm. And then the Phase, the Battle Round. The phases, yep. Moving Phase, so this is like an ex sort of expanded version of examples of the Oh, it's of the core rules, yeah. isn't it? Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Fair phase. Yep. Fight phase. Fighting a battle. Only war. It's the only war missions. That's, that's actually the same one from the book, isn't it? Yeah. And then that. So that is your starting guide. That's not bad actually. That's really good. So if anyone was just starting out, that's a very good uh, compliment to get to first try. Because mm. there's a bit more lore in that and there's a bit more uh, of how you play a battle. Yeah. And how to collect. For us it'd be an interesting reread. It will be actually, yeah. I mean we got the uh, Age of Sigma one, didn't we? Yeah. So these are your parts for your primary smearing. Yeah. I threw that over there, sorry. Just throwing it at me. Just throwing it at you now. Just because it's mine. No. You just don't like him. No, I don't actually. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick him together. Boom. Off camera. Yes. And then we're we'll back in a second. So there it is, the single Primaris Marine that you get with the book. So I'm going to go away and paint him in some colours I've got in mind. So the last thing we're going to take a look at. It's pink and white. Pink and white, yeah. Oh, you can spoil it. I wasn't going to tell anybody. <laughs> Not really, uh, but we're going to uh, shut. Up. <laughs> uh, we're going to um, have a look at the open war cards. So if you haven't seen these. There is a Games Workshop video on them. Mm -hmm. If you want to go and look at that, it probably explains it a lot better than I will. But having only just opened them up and not having a look at them yet, what we have is a set of different cards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have the uh, the rules there for open war. So we have a deployment deck, an objectives deck, a twist deck, a ruses deck, and a sudden death deck. Okay. So those are the rules for using them on there. If you can see that. And then how to set up. So if you've just got two armies, which aren't necessarily balanced, and you're playing off a battle, you can use this to determine what kind of battle you're going to play. So, we have various ruse cards. Yeah. We have sudden death cards. There we have twist cards. Lots of them. <laughs> twist cards are there. We have deployment cards. Surprisingly more than I was expecting. I was expecting about six of them. And then the rest should be all objective cards. So what you do is, when you meet your opponent, and... Um, oh. What are you doing? Try to sort them out. Badly. Right. You meet your opponent in battle, and you decide you want to play an open war. Mm -hmm. So you basically add up your power point, not rock points, you add up the power of your armies, and say Claire had 75 points, and had 25 points. So let's think of it in Age of Sigma terms, with it's like the Orcs versus Sylvana. So I'll have like 10 points, you know, 100 points. Mm -hmm. Right, so <laughs> that's why we should have these cards for Age of Sigma. Uh, you would basically, you choose an objective, which is supply cash in this case. To have each player's turn, they must roll a dice, uh, must roll a dice for each marker they control. In order to, sorry, I'll read from the top. Uh, the players take in turns to play six objective markers. Each must be placed more than six inches away from any other objective markers. And and any battlefield edge. All right. The start of each player's turn, they must roll a dice for each marker they control in any order. 
they wish. If they roll six, they have found the supply cache. Remove the other markers. The player that controls the supply cache at the end of the fifth battle round wins the battle. There we go. Oh, right, okay. So simply find the supply cache and control it. So you don't know which one it is at the start of the game. The deployment will be how the armies deploy. In this case, it's pretty much a straight battlefield. Um, one player on one side, one player on the other side. The twist is meeting battle. Each player must split their army into three contingents. No contingent can have more than half the units in the army. Each player sets up one contingent at the start of the battle using the normal rules for deployment. Second contingent arrives at the end of its controller's second movement phase and its last at the end of the controller's third movement phase. The units in the second and third contingent must be set up anywhere within nine inches of, from the enemy, with all models wholly within nine inches of any edge of the table, any edge of the battlefield, and outside any enemy deployment zones. There you go. So that would be your first three cards. Now, if one side is higher than the other, so in our example, I had ten points, didn't I? Mm -hmm. uh, you would pull out a ruse. Tactical reserves. So the player that's got the least points will get this card. Place the card at the end of any movement phase. Just pick one unit from your army that has been destroyed. You can set this up again, uh, more than nine inches away from an enemy, so that the unit is wholly within nine inches of the table battle. So you can bring back one of your destroyed units, uh -huh. any of them. Just as another example, let's have another one. Uh, inspiring speech. First card before deployment is complete, but before the, battle, the end of the first battle round. As long as your ward is on the battlefield, you will, you will ultimately pass morale test. That does give you an advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, if in our example I had 10 points, I had 100 points. <laughs> yep. If your points are more than double your opponent's, uh, your opponent will get the sudden death card, which is one of the sudden death. Like, drive them out. Starting from the third battle round, play this card at the end of your turn. If there are no enemy models in your deployment zone, you immediately win the battle. That's good. So, there you go. So you get, uh, imagine you keep that in secret, wouldn't you? Starting from the third battle round, play this card at the end of your turn. So if the enemy wasn't, isn't surrounded you and you're in deployment zone, you're going to win. Yeah. So it gives you an advantage of having a smaller army in a way. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, you can have sudden death conditions. It's not just like the ones in Age of Sigma. It's random. And I like that. That's really cool. I'd like a set of cards like this for Age of Sigma, to be honest. Yeah, it would be that really That way cool. when the Iron Jaws play your Silver Death, they might actually win again. <laughs> oh. There you go. Are they still so, smarting? Every time. Um... <laughs> So there we go, that's how the Open War cards work. There's a video on Games Workshop, mm -hmm. very similar. Um, probably explains it better than I have, so you can go and watch that. But I really like them. I think they'll be very handy, they, and they'll bring a lot to the gaming. What I'd say is, even in a match battle, if you, these are better than the Eternal War missions that we've played so far. Yeah. I mean, I like the Maelstrom one, so we're going to play, is it Maelstrom? Maelstrom, yeah. The one with the tactical objectives. Yes. We're going to use them in our next battle, we so are. I like how that works. But if you're not going to use tactical objectives, I reckon you just use the first three of these. So you get mm. your objective, your deployment, and your twist, and off you go. Mm. You don't worry about the missions. I really like the idea of having them on these cards. Yeah. The, the, it brings a whole new... Yeah. Way of gaming and also there's various combinations. Wasn't there's there? loads, like there's 50, like 50,000 50, I think. I think in the White Ross there's like 68 something yeah. thousand combinations of missions. So that's, possibly have. that's really good. I imagine that's only by using the sudden death ones as well. But yeah. There you go. So I think these are really good. Mm -hmm. So if you're just meeting somebody in a shop, you've just got an army, they've got an army, they can, you can both use your armies, pull these cards out, that's your mission. That's your a bit. That's because you've got less power than they mm -hmm. have. That's your bonuses, and if the double, you get a sudden death. Yeah. Off you go. Enjoy. Boom. I really like the idea. Um, better than using the ones in the book. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'd say even in a matched point, you could just use the first three of these. You could use them how you want to, couldn't you? Exactly. House rules. House rules. Right, so you might see us use them in the future, mm -hmm. to be honest. Definitely. Especially if one side has got more than the other. I might say we'll use an open war and we'll just randomly pick. I like it. Uh, we're definitely going to use them off camera, so... Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. So there we go. So that's our video, uh, First Strike and the uh, Open War cards. Mm -hmm. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly enjoyed unboxing the First Strike. I really like it. Yeah, definitely. Um, even if someone who's not new to it, I really like the models. That's the reason... Real reason we got it. Yeah. Um, 
the book is really just if you are on YouTube and you want some more information and a free Primaris to have a quick paint of. Mm -hmm. You can actually buy that first to see if you're interested and you want to paint. Yeah, then you like it enough. Obviously you've got to get paint from somewhere. <laughs> That's the only other thing. Um, but there he is again. He's quite happy. <laughs> you might not be after have painted him, but he's quite happy at the moment. Now he's looking worried. Right. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, tell everyone about us so mm -hmm. we can get some more subscribers. Um, and you can support us on Patreon if you wish. But that's it for today. And we will see you again soon. We have another battle coming up, as we said. Uh, it's um, the next battle in our random armies facing off against each other. Yes. And we're going to be using the tactical objectives in that. So stay tuned for that. And uh, if you're new to the channel, we've already done some battles of the new 40k. So you can check them out. Where we, we just picked random armies that we've made, uh, the six armies, and faced them off randomly. And even used each other's armies because it was just a random draw. Yeah. It was quite fun doing it because I, I got to play corn in one of them. You did, yeah. I got and to play Blood Angels. Wrong. And you got to play on Blood Angels, yeah. which upset me. And uh, you've never forgiven me. No. So it was quite a cool little thing to do. So it was. Well, I'd well. like to combine random armies with random missions. That'd be really good, <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching, and you guys take care. We'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.